Hello everyone. Yeah, unfortunately, back in the office, which can only mean one thing, not been doing a huge amount of fishing. So what I would thought I would do today was make a short video on basically sea urchin and Whitby fishing information. I get lads who phone me up who are inbound, who've not been before, and yeah, I get lots of questions as to where you're moored, what's your boat like, um, where to stay, all sorts of stuff. So I thought I'll take the chance. While I can't go to sea, I'll do something on land. So I'll just do a short little video today. Hopefully it'll be of use for people who've not been to Whitby before. Right then, the route into Whitby. The majority of people will end up coming in this way. Basically you've come on the 169, the A169 from Pickering. And this brings you into this roundabout here, the A171. For those coming from the northeast, sort of Hartlepool sort of area, they will come down the A171. And people coming from the Hull area, they will come up the A171 through Scarborough along the coast road. So the road that I've just come along there, as I said, the majority of people that are travelling any kind of distance usually come that way. So if you're coming up or down the A1, you turn off at the A64 and then you travel past York and you stay on the A64 until you come to Pickering. Uh, sorry, until you come to Moulton. Once you get to Moulton, there's a turn off at Eden Camp and then it's about 35, 40 minutes. It's a lovely drive over the moors in daylight. And then that will bring you eventually to that roundabout there. So now we're just coming into the outskirts of Whitby. So we're into Whitby proper itself now. Just as you come in, garage on the left, which might be useful for those who've traveled the distance and need to fill up before they go. So you can stop on the way out. There are two ways that you can go when you come in, really. When you're on this route, at the end of this road here is a set of traffic lights. Basically, you turn left or right. I would advise that this is the route that you would want to take. So, when we get down here, the traffic lights will turn right. The reason for doing that is that Basically, we're going to do a loop. And the first thing that we're going to do is see if we can find a parking space in the area that is free parking. Because, no holds bad, parking in Whitby can be a bit emotional, especially in the peak season from sort of Easter right the way through the summer. It can be hard, even when you arrive at five o'clock in the morning, sometimes getting a parking space near the boat on Church Street can be difficult. So this is what I would advise you do when you come in. So we're at these lights now and we're going to turn right. That was very kind of them. So we're now dropping down to Spittle Bridge. Once you go over the bridge, you want to be turning left. So down this little hill, at the bottom of this hill, you, you come onto Church Street. Church Street is where we're moored. Sea urchins on the pontoon at the bottom of Church Street. It's a bit of a grey day today. So 
So yeah, this is Church Street now that we're just coming onto. You'll see on the left hand side, once we get through these lights, you'll see cars parked. Now, all the way along here, it's free parking. So if you, if you drive on here first thing on the morning and you see a space, don't try and find one any further up. My advice would be literally get in it because all this is free, free parking. In the car parks in Whitby for the day, you'd be paying a tenner. So on the left here, yep. Yeah. There we go, look, the Holy Grail, there's a free park there. You would, so if you'd come down today, you could have jumped in there and saved yourself 10 quid. The thing to note, and this is really important, because I don't want people getting parking tickets. This section here, where the bus stop is, you can see there are still a series of cars parked. This is still free parking. However, you'll just see the start of some dotted lines there. Where these lines start, these dotted lines, this is not free parking. This is 40 minutes only. People make a mistake and see loads of spaces near the boat parking them and then you will end up with a parking ticket, 100%. This is the car park, Church Street car park. You've got the tackle shop on the right there, hook, line and sinker. And we'll go into the car park. So literally, my boat is moored directly in front of here. We're going to go down to the boat in a bit. So this would be my advice. Would come down Church Street, if you can get a free park, get one. As you can see today, there are no parks in this car park. So you, 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 ha you do have options. Again, my advice would be make life easy for yourself. You can drop your kit off and put it on the boat and then you'll need to go and find somewhere else to go and park. Which is exactly where I'm going to take you now. So we'll park across on the other side of the harbour. You'll always be able to get a park over there. So when you come out, just follow the road. You can't go anywhere else. Just follow the road round. So we're now at the at the swing bridge. A lot of dog walkers about this time of day. It really isn't very nice today. Definitely not the day to be out at sea. So we're just going to follow it round. time I'm gonna get wet never mind right so come to a little mini roundabout and straight dead ahead that is the train station as you can see plenty of parking spaces in there for whatever reason some people tend to get some issues with sorting out the parking on a morning the best piece of advice that I can give you is if, you've ha if you use a smartphone is to download the Ringo app. All the parking machines in Whitby use the Ringo app and all you need to do is put it onto your phone, enter your details of your vehicle, enter your payment details. You only need to do that the once and then when you come into Whitby, literally 
the machine and Church Street, you can see it's 4627, find that machine, and away you go. You literally select how long you want, and that's it, you're done. You don't need any stress, no aggro. Definitely get the Ringo app. Moving on, once you've got packed up, quite a few people like to have a bit of breakfast, either get a bacon roll or even sit down and have a full English. The singing kettle in Whitby opens at 5.30 on a morning. We usually sail at seven o'clock. So in between the Angel Hotel, which is the Weatherspoons pub, and the Angel Fisheries is this passageway. And you literally just tootle down here and it's on the right hand side. Sarah and the team in there, absolutely brilliant. They'll look after you and smashing breakfast. They'll even do pack ups. If you're really short, you've forgotten something, they will do pack ups uh, for you to take. Really, really useful place, Singing Kettle. Once you've got your belly full of bacon and eggs, you then just come out of Baxter Gate over the Swing Bridge, and then you go past the Dolphin Pub, and then you turn right down Grape Lane. At the end of Grape Lane, you'll see in front of you is Mr Chips, both the restaurant and the takeaway. They're ideal for getting somewhere to eat when you get back in in the afternoon, 50 metres from the car park. If you're looking for somewhere to go for a pint when you get back in, you could go down to the Middle Earth Tavern, which is just about 200 metres down Church Street, away from the pontoon. Lovely open fire, plenty of outdoor seating for the summer. Sandy and Jill really look after you. Accommodation-wise, got the station in just across the road from the train station, a pub and uh, bed and breakfast, plus then Sue's B&B, which is right next door to the Middle Earth Tavern. From there, it's simply a case of walk across the car park, down onto the pontoon where the boat's moored. There'll be people knocking around from some five o'clock in the morning, some guys get there, so that first come, first serve, they can get their place on the boat that they want to fish from. Right, so welcome aboard Sea Urchin. I'll give you a little guided tour, show you what's what. Always helps, I think, if people see what they're getting before they get it. Right, so I'll turn the cover around the other way and I'll give you a quick guided tour. One of the best things about Sea Urchin is the amount of deck space. There is a lot of deck space. Um, it's also, I mean, I'm moored on the outside boat at the moment, but I've also got uh, a full opening door so when I'm on the inside or if I need to drop people off it's really good for people who have got restricted mobility they can get on and off a lot easier from sea urchin because they can literally just step straight off onto the pontoon. Then we've got um, at the front uh, sort of like a bait station for the people fishing up at this top end I have separate chopping boards that sit on the top of there so people can chop up the bait when they're fishing. This central area here the engine hatch all the bags and everything go on the top of there so we keep the deck nice and clear and then as we go down the deck so we've got decent size proper nice landing nets and then at the back of the boat excuse the odd bit of gully turds that there are they're a nuisance so yeah at the back of the boat you've got another bait station Big chopping board, got filleting knives, baiting knives, buckets there. The big buckets we normally use for mackerel because we don't put mackerel in the fish boxes. And then the smaller red buckets normally used for putting squid and whatever in for, you know, bait buckets. Each angler gets their own fish box. If you fill one of them, you've had a good day. And they all sit in that stack so they don't go flying around when it gets a bit choppy or anything like that. And then, say, back down the other side. Anchor's in position because we're in uptide in season. And I'll just show you what else we've got. So there's a covered area then at the back of the wheelhouse that you can see. So if we are, say, moving between wrecks and it gets a little bit jowly, then everybody can tuck in so you don't all get soaking wet. There's also a little seating area in here that people can sit in. So everybody, even with 12 people on board, there's sufficient space for everybody to get, you know, tucked out of the elements, which is good. And then one of the biggest advantages, I think, for sea urchin above a lot of boats is, okay, its own 
proper toilet cubicle, which I always keep nice and clean, always got plenty of toilet roll. And we're gonna pass the days now of people having to do it in buckets and throw it over the side, you know. We're a little bit more refined now. So we see urchin, a lot of people do ask me, have you got a toilet? It can be a make or break decision as to whether they come on the boat. So yeah, as you can see, proper sea toilet, flushing, etc. Okay. Just an area there for hanging up coats and stuff. And then, yeah, wheelhouse, My Little Empire. She's a lovely boat. Got all the electronics in there, got my VHFs, uh, my sounder, plotter, uh, radar. Got two or three different plotters to be fair. And then at the front, you can hear the dehumidifier running, brew area, air gear and everything. And that's it. Well that's it. It doesn't take long to go around a, a boat of sea urchin size. I mean she's 12 metres long, 4 metres across. So big enough, plenty of deck space. But yeah, that's what we are. We've got deck lights on for the winter when you get on board. So you, when you're setting up you don't have to set up in the dark. We have deck lights on. Everything's comfortable. There's everything on board that you could need. Well that sort of concludes the little brief guided tour. Hopefully there was some stuff in there that's been of some use for some people you know if it makes your day less stressful and you get on the boat on time that's always got to be a bonus now you can see what you're coming to get on board as well if anybody's got any other questions comments by all means drop me a line hopefully next time we'll be out on the water fishing take care cheers <laughs>